Hi, my name is Fiji McAlpine with Do Yoga With Me. This is Renew and Restore, a practice that joins together the dynamic forces of vinyasa and the restorative forces that we need to truly relax, let go, and surrender. This should bring harmony not only to our practice, but to our life. Today you're going to need a bolster or a pillow and a strap with you on your mat. Enjoy. Let's start this practice today in Varasana or Hero's Pose. We're going to bring the knees apart, find the bolster or pillow that you have, and draw it between your inner thighs. We're starting our practice today in supported child's pose, letting the physical body and the mind fold down and in, unite together. So you're going to slide the hands forward on your bolster and ease your torso down. Slowly turning your left cheek and earlobe down onto your hands, relaxing the shoulders here, and surrendering completely to gravity's embrace. You want to feel an anchoring towards the floor. Try and soften and let go of every physical aspect that you can bring your mind's eye to. The gripping of the shoulders, even the clenching of your jaw. Take a few cycles of breath and allow your eyes to close. Let the body continue to feel that anchoring towards the floor. You're going to be here for a few moments, so adjust any way that you need to feel comfortable. The intention of our practice today is to unite in us the two dynamic forces of energy that we have. The energy of effort and that of surrender. And by joining those two energies together in balance, we create inner harmony. Symbolically, the season of spring is that of expansion, where energy starts to move from deep within us in an outward fashion. It's also seasonally the time of year where we have balance. Balance between light and dark, balance between day and night, yin and yang, fire and water. Just inviting some of that idea onto our mat in our practice and hopefully off of our mat and into our lives. With your left cheek currently resting down on your bolster, we're gonna stretch the opposite side of the neck. So we're turning now the right cheek very gently onto the bolster, but continue to release through the rest of your body. We can start with the idea of balance in our practice, balance in our life, by noticing your breath. The breath teaches us that element of balance. The expansion of the inhale as we move away from our center, extending out, taking in new, creating space. The contraction of the exhale, the softening as we retreat back into our center, that which is safe, that which is known using that balance of inhale and exhale throughout your practice to help cultivate that idea or concept in your mind and in your body. Now that we've allowed the physical body the opportunity to come still in one place, to gather together, now that we've allowed an opportunity for the mind to anchor itself deep within the body and its sensations, we can safely begin our practice. So slowly ease yourself up off the bolster by pushing down into your hands, rolling the spine up, and sitting back on your heels. Take the bolster and slide it off of your mat. You can move it away so that you don't feel crowded by your props. Then draw the knees together. Bring your hands forward, hook your ten toes under. We're going to let the back of the knees breathe a little bit here. Take the hands and guide them under your shoulders, flaring the fingers wide, rolling the inner shoulder blades together towards your spine. Inhale to undulate the back, taking the crown of the head and the tailbone up. As you do this, the last three ribs reach towards the floor. Reverse that motion in your back, tuck your chin, 
tuck your tailbone under. Just enjoy this movement of the spine, very similar to the movement of a wave, a wave of energy that you're creating. Inhale to come back to a nice neutral position for your spine, guiding the shoulder blades in again. Take your hands forward to the front of your mat now. Move your knees a few inches further back. Keep the toes hooked under and reach your sit bones towards the back wall. Let your forehead drop down between your forearms towards the floor, but keep your elbows lifted and the shoulder blades gliding towards your hips. Try and take your breath into the sides of your waist, increasing the distance between your shoulder blade and the top of your hip. And with your next inhale, one hand at a time, bring the hands under your shoulders. With your 10 toes hooked under, float your knees two to three inches off the floor. Guide some weight forward into your hands until you feel your hands truly anchor down. The four corners of the hands, even the fingertips themselves, are pushing into the mat until they become white with pressure. Take your knees wide and bring your sit bones back onto your heels. Your chest comes between your inner thighs. Feel the back of the pelvis expand. The hips begin to open. Inhale, come forward. And exhale, push back. Do that one more time. Inhale forward and exhale back. Now inhale to come forward. Pivot your knees and your toes to the left. Push evenly into both hands, pull your hips back. Try and push the left shoulder towards the floor and guide your head down. With the next inhale, come back to center with your knees. Feel that charge or that heat you're building in your legs. Take your knees and toes to the right, and again, draw the hips back and down. Let your forehead sink. Try and push the right shoulder towards the floor. Inhale back to center. Now with your next exhale, move back into downward facing dog. And I really encourage you here to bend alternating knees, to lift alternating heels to let your shoulders sway down one at a time, to let your body ease into the pose. Almost like dipping your toes into the water, just to notice what sensations your body has to offer today. Perhaps where the tension in your physical frame is hiding. And then once you've had a few moments here with that gentle like movement, we're gonna find a frame of stillness and let gravity begin to pull down on the heels and the head at the same time. Try and sense traction taking place in your back as the weight of your head falls forward towards your thumbs. The energy of the spine pulls back and lifts into your tailbone, so energy is moving in the spinal column evenly in two different directions and we're using two types of energy. The energy of surrender, surrendering the weight of the head, and the energy of effort as we extend up into the tailbone and back with the hips. Come back to the idea of a balanced breath. Full steady inhale. Complete exhale. With that next inhaling breath, lift your heels nice and high. Look towards your hands and begin to walk the feet in the direction of your thumbs. This first forward fold is passive. Soft elbows, soft shoulders, even soft knees. You can wiggle the toes to the bottom of your feet, let go of any unnecessary gripping. And again, the weight of your head is acting like a pendulum at the end of the spine to increase that sense of space between each and every vertebra. Keep bowing the chest forward, take your hands out to the side. Elevate your arms towards the sky, turning the palms to face one another. And then gently roll in one direction with your wrists. Let your hands pause, and then reverse the direction of the roll. Let your hands slide down the back of your legs. Gently draw the torso closer to your knees, maybe just a millimeter. Shift your weight forward into your toes. And then drop the hands beside your feet. Bend your knees and begin to sink your hips, like you're sitting down in a low chair. 
lift your head and heart so there's a nice diagonal line created from your head to your tailbone. And then draw the tailbone under so your belly moves away from your thighs. Take your hands beside your body, palm turned down, flare the fingers, stretch back with the fingers. From here, see if you can go a little bit deeper. Bring more of your weight into your heels. Continue to charge the legs. Take your hands out in front of your chest and follow your hands all the way up to stand. Join the palms together and bring your hands to your heart. Surya Namaskar and all the variations of sun salutation are saluting the light in your own heart, reminding ourselves of the energy that we do hold within. And sometimes we just need a little help waking that energy up, perhaps circulating it throughout our frame. With your next inhale, reach your hands up and use your breath to expand. As you exhale, bend the elbows, find the back of your heart with your thumbs, squeezing the forearms into your ears. Inhale to reach the hands back to the sky, toning your legs. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart and then all the way to the floor. Come halfway up on the inhale, lengthening the spine, Ardha Vatanasana. Exhale, step your left leg back. Make sure that the stride is big enough that you can bend your knee over your ankle, but that it doesn't easily extend over the ankle. If you find that you can easily take your right knee past your ankle towards your toes, I'm gonna ask you to tick-tock your back heel side to side so there's more distance between your two feet. Now energetically push down into the floor, into your right foot and into your left toes. Try and square your hips by pulling the right hip back, pushing the left hip forward, and then rising to your fingertips. The foundation is the most important part of our pose or our asana. It's giving us those strong roots from which we can rise. So once we have that base established, created, one that we can trust and use safely, inhale, take your hands forward and come all the way up. As you exhale, bend the right knee forward to again stack over the ankle, soften your back knee, square the hips, and tuck the tailbone under here. Let your hands drop down beside your hips, keep the shoulders soft. With your inhale, take the hands up and straighten the back leg. As you exhale, sink down to hover, tilting the pelvis so the tailbone draws under and the navel hugs in. Inhale again to lift. Exhale to sink. Last time, inhale to rise. Now exhale, come all the way down onto your left knee as gently as you possibly can. Inhale, sweep your hands up, move the hips forward, roll the shoulders onto the back. Exhale, turn your chest to the right, reaching your left hand in front of you and your right hand behind you. Flare the fingers in both hands and actively stretch away from your center. Bring the left hand down towards the floor, reach the right hand up towards the sky and turn your gaze to your top hand. Push the right shoulder towards the wall behind you. Take the right arm over your head and slowly down to the earth. Lift your left knee so you return to your high lunge and then bring your palms flat to the floor. Try and take your torso inside your right leg. Now we're going to remember something here. We're going to remember that this is our yoga practice. We're not getting a pedicure, so we're not going to exfoliate our right foot on our mat. We're gonna use so much core strength and energy that we lift the right foot and step it into downward facing dog without a sound. Take a big breath in. Exhale all the way out. Inhale now to move into your first plank pose. This plank pose can be with your knees elevated from the floor or resting on the floor for support. Choosing the pose that works best for you and always reminding yourself you can go back and forth between the two throughout your practice. Try and keep the breath moving through you. Keep the frame strong and solid. Take another full inhale. And then as you exhale, come down as slowly as you can. It's always more fun when you go slow. When you're flat down on your body, point the toes back, draw the inner shoulder blades together, hug your elbows in, pull the elbows down to lift into cobra. 
keep pulling the elbows in and down to move the collarbone far away from your ears. Exhale to roll the chest back to the floor. Hook the ten toes under, inhale back to plank. And exhale, downward facing dog. Take a full cycle of breath in, all the way out. Locking your gaze on your left foot, take your right leg towards the sky. As you do this, tone your right leg from your glute to your heel. Try and keep evenness to the shoulders and the hips. And flexing your foot, you're taking the heel towards the wall behind you. Now training the body with movement, exhale, pull your knee into chest, bring your chest forward. Inhale, take the right leg up. Using that same movement, step your right foot forward. Hop your hands off the front of your mat, use your fingertips. Stand in your right leg and lift your left. Flex the left heel, push it back towards the wall behind you, pull your toes towards your shin and then drop into forward fold as the left foot comes to the floor and the chest comes to the thighs. Bend your knees, sink your hips down like you're sitting in a low imaginary chair. Bring your arms beside your body, palms turned down, thumbs turned out, reach the fingers back. Now take the hands in front of you and follow them all the way up the stand as you inhale. Join your palms together and bring your hands to the back of your heart as you exhale. Inhale, reach up. Exhale to the front of your heart, hinge at your hips and drop down. Ardhava Tanasana halfway lift. Step the right leg back into a high lunge. Again, take some time to set the frame here. Always making sure that you feel confident in your foundation. Pushing that right heel back, bending the left knee to stack over your ankle pulling the left sit bone to the wall behind you and pushing the right hip towards the front wall. Try and keep that stability in your legs as you begin to activate the legs and push evenly into both feet in opposing directions. And then try that foundation out by floating your fingers. Once you have that base, use it by reaching the hands forward to come up to Exalted Warrior. Soften your back knee, square the hips, Tuck the tail. Let your shoulders soften and your arms sink beside you. On the inhale, straighten the back leg and reach up. On the exhale, sink down and in. Inhale, expanding. Exhale to sink. Last time, inhale, expanding. And exhale, softening. Ease the right knee all the way down to the ground. Inhale to reach the arms up as you sink the hips forward and down. As you exhale, turn your chest to the left. Reach the fingers out in two opposing directions, but with equal force. Take that right hand down towards the floor, left hand towards the sky. Turn the bridge of the nose and the gaze towards your top hand. Now push the left shoulder back, pull the right shoulder under so you're stacking wrist, shoulder, shoulder, wrist. Bring that left hand beyond the top of your head and all the way down. Elevate the right knee, returning to your strong, stable, high lunge position. Let your torso dip inside your left leg so that you're able to flatten your palms. Lift your hips, engage your core. Step the left foot to the back of your mat, coming into downward facing dog. With your next inhale, come forward to your plank, whichever variation you're choosing. And this time as we exhale, come down only halfway, bending your elbows into your ribs, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, flip the feet. Keep the legs toned and strong. Straighten the arms, chin to throat, crown of the head is reaching up. Soften the elbows, flip the feet, and stretch your hips back. Downward facing dog. Take a full cycle of breath in, and exhale all the way out. Locking your gaze on your right foot, float your left leg to the sky. Try and keep the tone to that leg as you extend the heel towards the wall behind you. Evenness to the hips, evenness to the shoulders. Exhale to pull the knee to chest. Inhale, reach the leg up. Exhale to step the foot between your hands. Hop your hands off your mat. Stand in your left leg and lift your right. Drop into forward fold, 
Move the chest against the thighs. Then bend your knees, lower the hips. Lift the head and heart. Inhale, open the chest. Sink deeper as you exhale. Inhale, reach the hands forward and up. And exhale to the back of your heart. Inhale, reach up. Pause now at the front of your heart. Drop the hands down beside your hips. Roll the shoulders up, back and down. Let's move the feet together. Big toes, heels, inner arches touching. Dropping into the chair of Utkatasana to really generate heat in the legs. Reach the arms over your head. Relax the shoulders. Flare the fingers, stretch back with your hips and up with your hands. Take your arms out to the side. Kiss the inner shoulder blades together. Take your hands behind you, rotating the palms to face. Imagine squeezing a ball behind your back. Now let the elbows bend. Grab hold of your hands. Stretch the knuckles towards the back wall. And exhale, coming into Karmasana. Bow the chest forward. Push the knuckles out towards the wall in front of you. Lift with your hips and push down into your heels. With that next inhale, come halfway up, dropping the hands beside your toes. And as you exhale, step the left foot back. Pivot the left heel down to the floor. Bend the right knee over the right ankle and pull up using that foundation to warrior one. As you exhale, sink down and in. Keeping the strong root of your back heel, try and turn the hips towards the front room or try and turn the hips and the chest towards the front line of your mat. And acknowledge that those hips are never gonna get completely square, but it's the intention or the yearning that opens up that connective tissue. Take your hands behind you again to clasp them. Inhale, stretch the knuckles back. Looking at your right big toe, exhale, hover the right shoulder over your right knee. Now push the knuckles up so your arm bones are vertical pillars extending from the back of your heart. Inhale, slowly lift. Straighten the right leg, pull the right toes in. Slightly pigeon-toed in your foundation, push into the outer edges of your feet. Inhale, gaze to the sky. And exhale, point the crown of your head forward and then all the way down to the floor. See how close you can get your knuckles to tapping the floorboards beyond the top of your head. Remember to activate your foundation like you're trying to stretch your mat out, pushing evenly into both feet. With the next inhale, come halfway up, dropping the hands under your shoulders. Bend your back knee, take your gaze to your front foot and rotate it towards the sky. Move the back knee towards the wall behind you, deep stretch of the right inner thigh, and bring your hands to your heart if that's available. From here, using the strength of your legs, strength of your breath, slowly move forward and switch sides. Rotate the left toes towards the sky, taking your gaze towards the back of your mat. Transitioning again through center, stay low with the hips, gaze forward. This time, let your hands come forward with you and return to a high lunge. Flatten the palms, nice activation of the core, step into downward dog. Inhale forward to plank and exhale chaturanga. Upward dog, inhale, and downward dog, exhale. Stretch back with the hips, release fully with the weight of your head. With the next inhale, take your right leg to sky. Step the right foot between your hands. Hop the hands forward. Stand in the right leg and lift the left. Now from here, move your hands from the floor to hover. If you can stay there, bring your hands to your heart. Lift your heart. Try and extend back with your heel and forward with the crown of your head. Drop into forward fold, left foot to the floor. Hands release. Let your torso release. Bend your knees, lower your hips. Back to the chair of Vukatasana. Relax the shoulders. Full cycles of breath. 
Bring your hands out to the side. Back behind you to face. Bend the elbows, interweave the fingers, stretch the knuckles back, and lower the chest. Gazing back between your shins, try and push your knuckles forward another millimeter. With that next inhale, come halfway up, fingers to the floor. So you exhale, step your right leg back, and pivot the heel to the earth. Bend your left knee to stack over your ankle, Inhale to come up to warrior one. Relax the shoulders here. Get grounded in both legs. Push into your back heel and try and turn the hips and chest forward. Draw the tailbone under. Hug your belly towards your spine. Relax the shoulders. From here, we'll bring the hands behind your back. Interweave the fingers again. Stretch the knuckles towards the back wall. Take your gaze to your left foot and let your left shoulder hover over your knee. Push the knuckles forward so your arms are extending straight up from the back of your heart. Inhale, peel the torso up off the left leg, straightening that left leg and pulling the toes in. Again, slightly pigeon toed in your feet, pushing your heels out. Extend the knuckles down to the floor on the inhale. And as you exhale, come halfway down and then all the way down with the chest. Point the crown of your head towards the mat, push your knuckles out beyond the top of your head and apply even pressure out into both feet, getting that deep outer ankle stretch. Inhale, come halfway up, drop your hands under your shoulders. Exhale, bend your right knee, walking your hands to the back of the mat. Turn your gaze forward, pivot the kneecap and the toes up. Using balance and breath, bring your hands to your heart. Using will and strength, come through center and switch sides. Take the gaze towards your back foot as you turn those toes towards the sky. Again, staying as low as you can in the transition, Move to the back of the mat, turn the left toes up. This time, let your hands come with you as you spring into high lunge. Strength from the core, step the left foot to the back of your mat and inhale forward to your plank. Exhale through chaturanga, upward facing dog and downward facing dog. Take a full cycle of breath in and all the way out. Let that left leg reach up towards the sky and then step your left foot between your hands. Hop your hands forward, stand in the left leg, lift the right. See if you can bring your hands just a little bit off the floor or all the way up to your heart, moving your heart away from the earth. Return to forward fold, dropping the right foot down, letting your hands fall and your head fall heavy. Bend the knees and one last time, sit down in that chair of Vukatasana. Stretch the hips back. Join the palms together. As you straighten your legs, bring your hands to your heart. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, reach the hands forward and slowly come down. Halfway lift with the next inhale. Step the left foot back as you exhale. Pivot the left heel to the floor, bend the right knee, lead with your left arm, and come into warrior two. Turning the chest and hips now to the long side of our mat. Engaging energy in two different directions, feeling the heart lift and the hips sink. Feeling the hands move forward and back. Feeling the breath expand the body on the inhale, soften everything as you exhale. Take the right hand forward now, Bring the right arm inside the right knee and push the knee back. Take the left arm towards the sky and turn the bridge of your nose and gaze to your top hand. Stacking here, wrist, shoulder, shoulder, wrist. Slow, steady, even breathing. Now we're gonna reach up with that left hand using energy from our roots, straighten the right leg. Reach the right hand forward again Take the right hand beyond your toes and then down anywhere along the right leg or floor that you can touch with the same intentional stacking of the shoulders and arms. 
the same opening of energy that rushes through your body. If there was a pose of balance in all of yoga, I really feel it would be triangle pose. We're expanding our energy in every direction possible and trying to do so equally, really uniting with the element of our breath. Bend the right knee one more time to pull up to warrior two. Gazing at your front hand, spiral the front and back hand down to mat. As quietly as you can, step to the back of your mat. Inhale to come forward to plank. And pause as you exhale. Pivot to the outer edge of your right foot and inner arch of your left foot. Using strength from the legs, keep your hips lifted. Lean into your right hand or arm and float your left arm towards the sky for that same stacking and extension and expansion here. Bring the left hand forward into the floor, return to your toes. Outer edge of the left foot, inner arch of the right foot. Hips are high, reach the right hand up. Bring the right hand forward and down. Take another inhale and downward facing dog as you exhale. From here, we're lifting the heels high. Look to your hands and you can choose to step or hop between the thumbs. Coming back to the front of our mat, halfway lift. Step your right foot back. Pivot the right heel to the floor. Leading with your right hand, reach the right hand forward, up and around. Sink down and into warrior two. Feel the strong, heavy rootedness of the lower body anchoring you to the floor. Evenly feel that lifting and extension in the upper body, the lightness. Reach out into both hands. Feel the fullness of your breath. Now take the left hand forward, down to the inside of the left leg, pushing the knee back. Stack your right arm perfectly above and extend away from your heart with both hands. Push down into both feet. Push the right shoulder back. Pull the left shoulder under. Inhale, come back up, straighten the left leg. Reach the left hand forward and down and pause anywhere that you can touch and establish that same sense of stacking, wrist, shoulder, shoulder, wrist. The same sense of expanding in every direction possible. Up and down in your hands, forward and back in your spine and out with your feet. Bend your left knee, inhale, pull back up to warrior two, gazing forward. Spiral the left and right hand down to mat. Using core strength, step to the back of your mat with your left foot. Inhale to come forward to plank. This time as you exhale, outer edge of the right foot, try stacking the left foot. Flex both feet, tone both legs, lift your hips. Stacking the left hip above the right, turning the pubic bone to the left side of the room. You can stay here, or the next level will be lifting the left arm, keeping the tone to the legs, keeping the elevation of your hips. Bring that left hand forward and down, return to your toes, outer edge of the left foot. Try stacking the right foot. Pull the toes back, tone the legs, use your obliques, lift the hips high, and then maybe take the right arm up. Slow, steady, even breathing. Bring the right hand forward and all the way down. Return to your toes. Inhale here. Bring your knees to the ground as you exhale. Point the toes back and ease your belly to your thighs. Rotate the palms towards the sky and bow the forehead down. Slowly begin to roll the spine up. Pull the fingers back towards your knees. Loop the shoulders up, back, and down here. Let's go ahead and find some of our props. So you might want to bring your bolster closer to your mat. And now it's time to find our strap. I'm going to bring the hands forward, cross your ankles, and rock over your heels. 
so that your feet can come out towards the front of the mat. And then adjust so that your hips are in the very middle of your mat. We're gonna take advantage of the effort we have put forward in our practice that has created internal heat, increased our circulation, and allowed our body to come to a state where the mind and body are linked together, listening. So we're gonna move deeper into our poses now, releasing tension from the connective tissue. And we're gonna do this by pulling the right side of our body nice and snug to the bolster. You want to make sure you've got some bolster under the hip and some bolster above your hip. Then find your strap and we're going to take the strap and place it around the ball of our right foot. Take your right hand and grab as close to your foot as you can because when we go into poses it's quite easy to slide your hand out on the strap if you need more space. It's a little more awkward to try and creep your hand back up. So I like to start right up against the limb. Your left hand can pop out to the side to ease yourself down onto your back. Once you're flat on the floor, you're gonna push up into your right heel, working the right leg as straight as it can go. Tone the front of your leg to help release the back of your leg. Pull your toenails down. and then begin to extend the left leg out, toning the leg all the way from hip to heel. By toning your left leg, it's gonna help the left hip stay anchored to the floor. Now from here, we're gonna to begin to bend the right elbow, strengthening the right bicep, pulling the toes gently towards the wall behind you. The key here is that word, gently. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. Start to bend your right elbow and pull those toes gently towards the wall behind you. The key word there is gently. We're trying to find that fine line between resistance and pulling beyond our limitations. Using your breath always as a barometer, making sure that there is a smooth transition between the inhale and exhale. Now take your left arm out to the side so that your left shoulder can feel heavy and anchor itself to the floor. Using strength from the right arm, take the right leg out to the right, eventually finding the support of the bolster. Extend out into your right heel, bend your right elbow even more you should feel a nice activation in your bicep as you pull the toes up towards the wall behind your head. Remember to anchor through your left leg. Remember your left leg has a purpose to stay toned and extend out into the left heel. Keeping nice traction in that strap, guide your leg back to center. Hold the strap with both hands. Use core strength as well as arm strength to lift your torso off the floor, taking your gaze forward. Gently pull the toes towards the wall behind you. Release the shoulders back to the earth. Holding on to the strap with your left hand, release your right arm out to the side. Slowly guide your right leg over to the left. You don't need to go very far to find that strong sensation in the outer hip and IT band. Once you find it, just linger there with that sensation. Play with it with your breath. Slowly come back to center. Bend your right knee, pull it to the outer rib cage down towards the floor. Release the strap from around the right foot. Extend the right leg nice and long. Shake both legs. Grab hold of your bolster. And bring it across your body. The outside of your left hip nice and snug. Bend both knees. Plant both feet. Bring your left knee into your chest. Make a loop with your strap. Slip it around the ball of your left foot. 
and get your left hand as close to your foot as you possibly can. Begin to extend the left heel towards the sky, letting your hand slide away from the foot as much as needed. Flex that left foot, kicking the heel up, pulling the toes down. Tone the quadriceps so your kneecap defines and the hamstring releases. And then extend the right leg long, engage the right leg. Push the back of your right knee towards the floor, point the heel towards the wall in front of you and the toes towards the sky. Now bend your left elbow and gently pull the toes back towards the wall behind you. Your body will inform you when you found your limit. And that's where you simply stay and linger with your breath. Having patience. Take your right arm out to the side so your right shoulder can anchor and slowly guide your left leg out over the bolster. Letting the outer thigh find the support of the bolster. Try and push into the heel as you pull back with the ball of your foot. Bend your left elbow to engage the bicep, pulling your toes back towards the wall behind your head. Bring the left leg back to center and grab that strap with both hands. Engaging the core and the arms, lift the torso, moving your forehead towards your knee. Slowly ease back down and let your left arm fall to the floor. Using your right arm, guide the leg across your body just until you feel that dynamic stretch through the outer hip and IT band. Slowly come back to center with the left leg. Bend the left knee, pulling it to the outer ribs. Release the left foot and take the strap off to the side of your mat. Extend the left leg out and shake both legs here. Bring your knees in towards your chest, holding on to your knees. Pumping your legs, begin to rock on the spine, massaging the back. Go nice and slow until eventually you rock all the way up to seat. From here, we're gonna bring the bottom of the feet together, scoot forward with the hips, and guide that bolster behind our back. Drawing it tight to the back of the pelvis, wrapping the hands tight around the toes. Take your elbows to the side and slowly lean forward with your chest coming into cobbler pose. Try and release through the outer hips and both legs. As you inhale, lift the torso. Reach the hands out in front of your chest. And as you exhale, rounded back, slowly roll onto the support of the bolster. As you do this, allow your arms to fall down beside you. Feel the expansion of the front of your body. Slow, steady, even cycles of breath. So that concept or idea of moving into a season of expansion, not only in your practice, but your life, means that all of the internal work that's been taking place is starting to come to surface. You start to feel that inner itch to do new things, try new things, new ideas or motivations. Allowing yourself to generate the energy to move forward with those motivations and ideas. So this is going to be our place of rest that we're going to return to in between rounds of backbending. Using the bolster as a little lift or support for our rounds of backbends today. Hug the knees together, flatten the feet to the floor and draw the big toes into touch. Take your arms to the sky, bend your elbows and bring your fingertips to the floor and try and push the heel of your hand back, hugging the elbows in. Just getting your arms into this frame can be a nice practice and stretch in the shoulders. 
there's two options that we have. The first is lifting your hips, coming into bridge pose, preparing for wheel by having your hands in that position. The second option would be using the push down into your hands to come up onto the crown of your head on the bolster. Once you're there, you can adjust the hands of the feet if needed, and you can choose perhaps to come all the way up in the pose. Reaching up with the belly, pushing down into your feet, breathing up and down the front side of the body. As you exhale, tuck the chin and ease back onto your bolster and return to that frame of rest, allowing yourself to expand. At the same time, allowing yourself to soften, realizing the necessity of both, realizing the potential in both. Let's gather in strength and motivation for our second and final round of backbending, choosing the same pose or maybe a different one this time. Starting with the arms up over your head, bringing the fingers to the floor, anchoring down into the heel of your hand. Hug the elbows in so you can engage your lats. Use the legs first to lift the hips. Stay there. Maybe one pump to the crown of your head. Make adjustments if needed. And perhaps come all the way up to wheel. Slow, steady, even cycles of breath in whatever frame that you choose. When you're ready, ease yourself back down. Again, let the knees fall out to the side, bottom of the feet together, and let your hands fall beside you, palms turned up. Let your eyes close in this third round. Allow your mind and your body to surrender to gravity's embrace. Here as we surrender that effort in the physical frame, we receive the benefits of that surrender in space, space in our hips, space in our shoulders, space in our heart. You can keep your feet in this frame or if you prefer you can take Shavasana with legs extended. The heart is lifted. The heart is supported here. Allowing yourself to the best of your ability to accept and embrace the idea of support. Very slowly move the fingers and the toes, reawaken the body for a second time. Noticing the sensation of balance and harmony within you. Having activated both energy moving through the body, energy creating movements and breaths, and movements and breaths that helped us to soften and surrender, creating this sense of calm and this feeling of truly being present. I'm gonna keep that feeling with us as we start to transition out of this pose and onto our left hand side, just by rolling over. And then coming all the way up. Make your way to any seated pose that suits your physical frame. Anchor down into your hips and bring your hands to your heart. And keep this feeling of harmony 
this feeling of balance that is internal with you. Until next we meet. Namaste.